Welcome to this lecture about different measures that are associated with how well a clinical test performs to for example predict if a person has a disease. In this lecture we'll discuss the meaning of the sensitivity and specificity of a test as well as its accuracy. We'll also learn how to calculate these metrics. The two main terms used to describe how well a test performs are sensitivity and specificity. If a diagnostic medical test results in a positive outcome, that usually means that the person has the disease. For example, if a person tests positive for HIV, this means that the person is infected by HIV according to the test. A positive test result can also be associated with other things. For example, a pregnancy test that turns positive means that the person is pregnant according to the test. However, almost no test is 100% accurate, which means that many test results are wrong. How well a test performs is associated with its sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity tells how often a test turns positive for people who have the disease. For example, let's say that there is a person who is infected by HIV if the person takes the HIV test, the test should turn positive since it should detect the presence of the HIV virus in the blood. This is why a person who is infected by HIV is called HIV positive. This is called a true positive result because it is true that the person is infected by HIV. Since almost no test is 100% accurate, it is possible that a test may give an incorrect outcome as in this example where a person who is infected by HIV takes the test, which generates a negative result. This is called a false negative result, because it is false that the person is not infected by HIV. In this example, a false negative result would mean that the person who is infected by HIV will get the wrong information of being healthy. Sensitivity is here defined as a proportion of people who are infected by HIV that will actually receive a positive test result. For example, if the sensitivity of a rapid self-test for HIV is 99%, this means that 99 out of 100 individuals who are infected by HIV are expected to get a positive test. This means that we expect to get 99 true positive results and one false negative result. We'll now have a look at the definition of specificity. Specificity tells how often the test turns negative for people who do not have the disease. For example, a person that is not infected by HIV who takes the test should get a negative result. Such a result is called a true negative result because it is true that the person does not have HIV. However, it might happen that even though a person is not infected by HIV, the test might turn positive. This would mean that the person who is not infected by HIV will receive the wrong test result of being HIV positive. This is called a false positive result because it is false that the person is infected by HIV. In this example, specificity is defined as the proportion of people who are not infected by HIV that will actually receive a negative test result. For example, if the specificity of a rapid self-test for HIV is 98%, this means that 98 out of 100 individuals who are not infected by HIV are expected to get the negative result. In contrast, two out of the 100 individuals who are healthy are expected to get the wrong message of being HIV positive. It is therefore important that diagnostic tests have as high sensitivity and specificity as possible in order to detect the ones who have the disease and to exclude the ones who do not have the disease. Diagnostic tests should therefore have as high sensitivity and specificity as possible. How can we estimate the sensitivity and specificity of a certain test or evaluate the performance of a potential biomarker? 
As an example, we'll here see how the sensitivity and specificity can be calculated based on some simulated data of the PSA level of 7 prostate cancer patients and 7 healthy controls. This plot shows the concentration of PSA in the blood for 7 men with prostate cancer and 7 healthy controls. The ones in the control group are here denoted as belonging to the healthy group. For example, this person has prostate cancer and a PSA level of about 4 micrograms per liter. Whereas this person is a healthy individual with a PSA level of about 2.5. We can see that the 7 individuals with prostate cancer generally have higher PSA levels compared to the 7 individuals who do not have prostate cancer. To confirm the presence of prostate cancer, one can take a biopsy from the prostate. The aim is to see how well a simple blood test for PSA can identify prostate cancer. Let's pretend that we do not know which of these individuals will have prostate cancer. How well can the PSA test then predict if a person has prostate cancer or not? In order to estimate the sensitivity and specificity of the PSA test for prostate cancer, we need to set a cutoff value. As an example, we have here set the cutoff value to 2.3. The effect of different cutoff values will be discussed in a lecture about ROC curves. When we use a cutoff value 2.3, this means that all the individuals with a PSA level greater than 2.3 will be predicted to have prostate cancer. I might be recommended for a biopsy to confirm the result. Whereas all the individuals below this level will be predicted to be healthy. Since we know from previous biopsy tests that these seven individuals actually have prostate cancer, we know that these two persons will be incorrectly predicted to be healthy because their PSA levels are below 2.3. Also, since we know that these individuals are healthy, we know that this person will be incorrectly predicted to have prostate cancer by the PSA test because the person has a PSA level that is greater than 2.3. This means that we will have 5 true positives, 2 false negatives, 1 false positive, and 6 true negatives. Let's summarize our results so far in a contingency table that shows the number of true and false positives and the number of true and false negatives. In total we have 7 individuals that actually have prostate cancer. And 7 individuals were known to be healthy. Out of the 14 individuals, the PSA test with a cutoff value of 2.3 predicts that 6 individuals have prostate cancer. Out of these 6 positives, 5 individuals actually have prostate cancer and are defined as true positives. Whereas one individual is actually healthy, which is therefore called a false positive. Out of the 14 individuals, these 8 individuals are predicted to be healthy by the PSA test. Out of these 8 individuals, 6 are actually healthy, whereas 2 have prostate cancer. These 2 are therefore defined as false negatives because they actually have prostate cancer, but the test shows a negative result. Based on these numbers, we can calculate the sensitivity of the PSA test by the following formula. Remember that the sensitivity is how often the test results in a positive result for the ones who have prostate cancer. We see that 5 out of the 7 individuals who have prostate cancer get a positive outcome. The sensitivity is therefore calculated as the number of true positives divided by the total number who actually have the disease, 
which is the sum of the number of true positives and the false negatives. We see that the PSA test for this example data with a cutoff value 2.3 has a sensitivity of about 71%. We'll now have a look at how we can calculate the specificity. Remember that the specificity is how often the test results in a negative outcome for the ones who do not have prostate cancer. We see that 6 out of the 7 healthy individuals are predicted to be healthy. The specificity is calculated as the number of true negative cases divided by the total number of healthy individuals which is the sum of the true negatives and false positives. We see that the specificity is calculated to about 86%. We can also calculate the accuracy of the test, which is the proportion of the correct predictions. To calculate the accuracy, we therefore divide the total number of correct predictions, which is the sum of the true positives and negatives, by the total number of individuals that are tested. We see that the accuracy of the test is about 79%, which tells us that in about 79% of the cases, the PSA test makes the correct prediction. To summarize, when we calculate the sensitivity, we focus on the first row in the table, which includes the individuals that actually have prostate cancer. And when we calculate the specificity, we focus on the second row in the table, which includes only the healthy individuals. In the next lecture, we'll discuss the positive and negative predictive values and calculate these based on the same data set as we have used in this video.